if you were to put this moment in time in context over the last 10, 20, 50 years, is there an analogy? Is there, how would you contextualize what we are seeing this month, this week, this day? You know, immediately after the October 7th tax, there was lots of talk of the October 1973 war. Um, and it's being similar, the surprise attack the Israelis caught off guard. I think that that analogy worked for some time, you know, for, for a short period of time, but we're sort of in unprecedented waters here. Unprecedented, is that a good metaphor? We're in an unprecedented moment uh, in, in, in the Middle East in the sense that one, Israelis are essentially battling non-state actors, which are much, much more difficult to deal with. Two, they've been fighting a war for 10 months, something Israel has never done. Uh, this is the longest war in Israel's history and goes against all of their military doctrine. And, 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 and three, what's interesting is that the Arab states aren't involved. These are non-state actors in Arab countries and the Iranians. Um, so this is something we have not seen before, um, both in, in, in the Middle East and also the political fallout of it here in the United States or in Europe are things that we have never seen before. And I think they're reflective of a changing politics uh, of the Middle East in the United States. Obviously, things on the ground are moving very quickly, as I said at the beginning. The developments are developing on a minute by minute basis. But Stephen, what will Welcome you- Welcome to my life. I was just about to say, what are you watching? What else are, will you be paying attention to in the coming days and weeks? The 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 key figures that I look at and, and will be looking for in the coming days is what is Yahya Sinwar, the head of Hamas, doing? And what are Netanyahu's partners, coalition partners to the right of him? What are they doing? Um, I think they're critical to um, what will happen uh, next in the region. And when it comes to the Iranians, um, I'm just waiting for them to respond because I'm almost certain that they will. I know that's dangerous for an analyst to say something like that, but I don't think given the affront of the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran, I don't think they can let it pass. And what does that mean for Americans who are hearing these headlines and you're saying, you know, Iran might is likely to retaliate, you know, what what does that mean for day to day news watchers? It, uh, well, I, I think a couple of things. One, you know, the Iranians um, do have the capability to mess around with um, freedom of navigation in and around the Middle East. And that means the free flow of energy resources, which means that Americans may be affected in terms of what they pay at the pump to fill up their cars. The other thing, and I think a more immediate one, is that the United States has sent large numbers of forces into the region to try to deter the Iranians. But not only are they trying to deter the Iranians by this demonstration of force, there's also an implicit threat there that the Iranians will be suffer a, a terrible blow should they directly attack Israel and cause a lot of damage. That means, once again, American forces engaged in hostilities in the Middle East, something that hasn't been the case for three years. 